This is how to create the glitch animation. Enable the node plugin. Add the nodes panel to the UI. For doing the animation later, make one of the UI panels a dope sheet, and then create a new node tree. Now we're going to add three circles to the nodes tree. For the purposes of making it look nice, I'm going to add some random values for the radius. I'm going to add a move node to each one of the circles so that the circle's position can be changed based on the frame information. Connect the vertices of each of the circles to the vertices on the move node. For the purposes of helping see what's going on behind the scenes, I'm going to add a stethoscope node which will show what the actual values of each of the nodes are. This part is optional, but I'm adding a list join. Um, I'll show you here in a sec why this could be useful. Adding a polyline viewer here will actually show us what the vertices data is looking like. So connecting the data output to the vertices node on the polyline viewer will show you what's actually going on. Here I'm playing around with the move vector. This will actually be controlled by the frame information or the frame number. Here I'm adding the frame info node. Adding a stethoscope to the output will actually show us what's going on when I scrub through the dope sheet. Since the frame information or the frame number is a large number, such as 1, 2, 3, etc., I want to make it smaller by dividing it, or multiplying it actually, by 0.1. So that we can control the x, y, and z of the move vector, I'm going to add a vector in node so that we can connect that uh, scalar math output into either the x, y, or the z vector input. Since I want to have some of the values be negative, I'm going to create another node that will multiply the output of the scalar math by negative 1, which will allow us to have negative values. What we're going to do now is convert the raw data into a curve, and then we're going to convert the curve into a surface. What we're going to start off with is an arc three-point curve since the list join creates a list of three lists, we need a list item node, which will grab just one of the indexes of the list. We will need three of these nodes since we have three lists. And I'm also going to use the stethoscope node to make sure I'm grabbing the right indexes. At the end of the video, I'll see why doing this list item stuff is actually kind of cool. The node that actually converts a curve into a surface or a mesh is called surface from curves. And to convert that surface object into something that we can use for visualization, we need a evaluate surface, which will convert the surface into the vertices, edges, and faces. Adding a mesh viewer will allow us to view this data on the screen and be able to add materials to it. This is what will actually get rendered. In order to get the cool grid effect, we're going to need a wireframe node and a diamond mesh node. Connect them like this. As you can see with those modifiers applied, you get this cool grid wireframe effect and it looks really cool. Make sure to remove the polyline visualizer before you render, unless you want that in your animation. If you're curious why the list item and the list join stuff is kind of interesting, here's how you can change the mesh dramatically by just changing the index that they point to. So as you can see, this points at index 0, 1, and 2. If I change this one to 1, this one to 2, and leave that one at 0, you get a completely different mesh. And it allows you to basically change stuff really quick. That's pretty much the only reason. Otherwise, if you don't want to do any of that, you can just connect this, this, and that, update the node tree, and it basically does the same thing. Once you're happy with how the animation is going, I added some glow, ambient occlusion, motion blur, um, various other styling and effects, such as camera movement, just basically however you want to style it. And then for the final render that I did, I added a VHS overlay, some curves, and sound effects. Pretty much that's how you do it. That's how it came out good. 
In the description is a link to the Nodes plugin, along with the various keyboard shortcuts that I'm using. If this helps, please leave a like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.